Now, a closer look at China's GDP growth target of over 6% for this year. We're joined by Dan Wang. She's chief economist with Hang Seng Bank China. Dan Wang, China's revealed that 2021 GDP growth target figure of a rather modest 6%. Were you surprised by that number? Yes, I was, because it's entirely unnecessary to set a goal like that. Uh, the market consensus now for China's 2021 growth is above 8 percent. And we also estimate China can grow at least by 7.5 percent this year. So combine this target of above 6 percent with a more relatively uh, conservative stance in macroecon uh, macroeconomic policies, my conclusion is that China is not trying to pursue high growth this year, so it will prioritize other things like financial stability and perhaps more structural reforms. So how does, what does that mean then for the outlook of uh, China's post-COVID-19 pandemic recovery? Uh, in 2020, when we look at the economic growth, it was quite impressive. But that 2.3 percent of growth was half from uh, export, that was foreign demand, and more than half from industrial build up, and that's from uh, the industrial sector. But when we look at uh, the consumption, it was still in contraction. So this year, I don't think the situation will be that different. The industrial build up is still quite rapid. And the export sector is relatively strong right now, but I think it would get a bit weaker in the second half of the year. And consumption, uh, unfortunately, I think will be very difficult to be rebooted because uh, when we look at the city level consumption recovery, we found that among China's 292 prefecture cities, the consumption recovery are only concentrated in what we call the first tier and the second tier cities, that's China's largest cities. But once you're outside of those larger cities, you look at small cities, county cities, and also rural regions, then the consumption are still in contraction. And I don't think there is a good way to persuade people to spend again because of a weak job market. And I think it will be very difficult year actually for China to try to find new ways to boost the growth and also create jobs. Well, meantime, Dan Wang, China is focusing on science, tech and innovation this year. Do you see these sectors as pivotal drivers for growth for the country? Uh, I can see technology and innovation being pivotal drivers 10 years from now. But right now, I think they only help marginally for China's growth. Because when we break down China's economic engines, about 60% in a normal year, 60% of the growth is from consumption, about 30% is from investment, and the rest 10% from export. The technological add up, uh, it accounts for a more, a bigger part in China's economic growth, but still not significant. And we need to realize that e-commerce, the fast developing sector in China, especially after the pandemic, they're not really high tech. And when we think about e-commerce, it's mostly uh, e-delivery, a lot of labor uh, in the factory, in the warehouse. And that's not so different from the traditional manufacturing sector. So maybe five to 10 years from now, China would find real innovation and that could speed up its upgrading of the supply chains. Um, but if we want to look at a broader sense of uh, the definition of technology, if we're looking at like new organization of an institution or better allocation of resources, then yes, I think that kind of innovation can spur growth to an extent. Well, technology is, uh, as you mentioned, a key driver to uh, the economy. But is it also a country's uh, key response to the geopolitical tensions in the global environment, particularly the U.S.? Oh, absolutely. Um, because the reason why China starts to emphasize uh, indigenous innovation is because it wants to get prepared for the threat from the U.S. And ever since China-U.S. got into the trade tension in 2018, we have noticed that China's productivity had declined from that year. And this is quite unusual because from 2001, that's the year China joined the WTO, the technological gap between the U.S. and China has been shrinking all the way until 2018. And then China has realized that it has to invest more resources into this sector in order to compete with, uh, with the U.S. if it wants to get a bigger share in the global market. 
And Chinese leaders now talk a lot about China being a global leader in things like climate change and have bigger influence in Belt and Road countries. Uh, to achieve that, a, a higher technological ability is also required. Dan Wang, thank you very much for sharing your perspectives with us this evening. Dan Wang there, Chief Economist with Hang Seng Bank China.